Hello everyone, I'm George Myland. So um, here I'm in London and behind me is Lord Raglan's house, that white one there. So we're in the um, Mayfair area, one of the plushest areas in the whole of Londinium. So um, Lord Raglan, well, his, his, his son is actually Somerset. Um, so he was um, the youngest son of the Duke of Beaufort. The Duke of Beaufort was a major landowner in, in uh, southwest England. So our Lord Raglan, he was born um, uh, at Badminton, the town, not the sport. The sport takes its name from Badminton School um, in the town of Badminton, of course. So he grew up most there in Gloucestershire, where the family seat was. There's the Beaufort Hunt there, as in name for the Duke of Beaufort, um, as in people riding to the hounds. So uh, though, though, though he was from there, he went to school at Westminster, as in Westminster School here in London, one of the most distinguished schools in the realm. Uh, he was not a very bookish sort, as he came from a large, rumbustuous family. They, they were Anglicans. Um, and um, he, was, he was born in 1788, same year as Peel, whom he knew quite well, Sir Robert Peel. And uh, then he was commissioned into the armed forces, a commission was bought for him, and that was going in some forms of the 1860s. It's partly due to him that that, that system of purchasing commissions was abolished. Um, anyway, so he fought in the Peninsular War, that's to say in Spain and Portugal, against the French as part of the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, and he went on, um, he did some um, defence diplomacy, a military mission to, to Constantinople, as we then called it Istanbul, because he was trying to enlist the Ottomans on the Allied side in that war. Um, uh, anyway, so ooh, he got married, he had several children, but uh, I'll cut to the chase. What he's best known for is uh, the, the, the Crimean War. Um, and Lord Fitzroy Somerset, as he was known, he was there 1853 to 56. Well, he died in 55. The war went on to 56. The Crimean Peninsula in, in um, uh, Ukraine, or Russia now claims it anyway, part of the Russian Empire at the time, um, so fighting against uh, the Russians because they broke the Treaty of Unkiusk Kalesi. Far be it from the Russians to ever break a treaty um, uh, about not building um, uh, fortifications on the Black Sea coast. So um, uh, then the Piedmont, France and the Ottoman Empire were all on the same side as the United Kingdom. Won't give you a blow-by-blow -blow account of the war. Some successes, some failures, investing some of the Russian fortresses. And he's the one who gave the order that led to the charge of the Light Brigade, but he gave it to Lord Cardigan, who gave it to somebody else. Uh, and it was, um, uh, was it garbled? I mean, what was wrong? Did he not, did he, was there a lack of clarity of the order possibly, as in to charge the Russian position at the end of the valley? Which valley? valley? And this officer had to take a 50-50 on which valley was, was meant and, and, and pick the wrong one. Um, and he didn't want to lose face in front of his men, I think, because it had been, been um, delivered to him verbally. I want to say, actually, ask for clarification, go back. That could take a while. The, the dynamic could change. Maybe the propitious moment for the attack would have been gone. But anyway, that was a ca calamity. Heavy British casualties. I'm not sure they inflicted a single uh, casualty on the Ruskies. So, um, uh, it was semi-effective. Some people see him as a poltroon and far too nice to be a decent military officer. Bearing in mind, this is a time when blogging was used promiscuously and the commissariat was not up to much. They were often demanding that forms be filled out in triplicate. They weren't adequately supplied with food, bandages, clothing, anything like that. Conditions and barracks, even in peacetime, were dreadful. A lot of soldiers died from insanitary conditions. So he was suffering dysentery and became, became depressed, died in 1755. But his body was repatriated. He's buried at the family seat at Badminton in Gloucestershire. But before his death, he was um, um, ennobled in his own right because he had a courtesy title as the son of a peer and he became Lord Raglan, that's after a town in Monmouthshire. But I'm not sure if he had, if he had any connection to Wales. Um, so you can see him in a number of films, well, such as The Charge of the Light Brigade, uh, depicted by some very able actors. And so some people sort of see him as a dimwit, as um, the archetypal over-promoted um, aristocrat just through blue blood and nepotism has risen to a, risen to a command for which he's completely unfit, um, maybe temperamentally unsuited, a poltroon, um, Probably some truth in that. I mean, purchasing pur purchasing uh, commissions is always going to be asking for trouble. And partly because of this, Lord Sandhurst chaired the commission saying, we've got to get rid of that. Royal Military Academy set up at Sandhurst. There had already been Woolwich for quite some time before that, since the late 18th century. Woolwich was a military academy for, like, um, uh, the technical branches of well, engineering and artillery, because you had to be able to do the sums in order to do that. Anyway, that's just a little bit about Lord Raglan here in, um, uh, in uh, Mayfair. 
but uh, some people coming back. I couldn't film it for ages because there all this work was going on in front of it. He'd obscured that plaque. And there's some very smart hotel. There's a, a very uh, um, expensive car there with an Arabic uh, registration plate. And some guys hanging around look like somebody's security detail. Anyway, I'll switch it off now. Toodaloo.